cleaning supplies and tools, essential ones. How long should you keep them? When to get rid of them? And what to do to prolong their life? So if you're like me, a solopreneur, when I just started my cleaning company back in 2009, literally with a backpack and cleaning other people's houses, then you probably are confused and you're like, look, my sponge looks good. What do I do with it? And my mop head looks fine. When should I get rid of it actually? If you have the questions like that, or perhaps you're an in-home mom and or dad and not in-home, a working mom and or dad, and you just don't know what to do. So this video is the exactly what you need and what you're looking for. There's a really cool article that just came up in the life hacker and I went through it and I highlighted the essential areas that you need and without a further ado, let's go down. How often do you really need to replace your mop, sponges and or other cleaning supplies? So very first thing, a sponge. So they talk sponge apparently or suggestion is to get rid of it once a week. So the suggestion for according to the WebMD is to replace the sponge once a week and every two days you need to clean the sponge. And the suggestion to clean the sponge is to pop in a dishwasher and or microwave it, which I did not know, for one minute while it's a little damp. So the sponge needs to be a little damp, then you put it in a microwave and you microwave it for one minute. Two little hacks, how to last your sponge for a little longer. In a test run by US Department of Agriculture, apparently, when you microwave, 99.99999% of bacteria dies. And when you put it in a dishwasher, 99.9998% bacteria dies. So it's effective. <laughs> Do it if you don't. Um, they, uh, they recommend getting rid of it once a week. Lufas. And those are the, the sponges that you, you use yourself and wash yourself with. If your loofah is natural, it should be tossed out every three to four weeks. So we have organic ones, right? The organic, the green, eco-friendly is a big thing now. And luckily even the commercial land are coming in and preaching and selling and adapting. And it's amazing because we only have one planet. And if we screw this one up, we have nothing or nowhere else to go. And the suggestion is this is per Cleveland clinic. And if it's the synthetic, feel free to hold for two months. So basically three to four weeks, which is one month on average to get rid of it. If it is organic and if it's synthetic, man-made, then you can double the time. So literally use it for two months. Mop hats, for those that are solopreneurs, cleaners, and this is super, super important for us. For example, for myself, it was extremely curious thing to find out. They recommend to get rid of them every two to three months. So every two to three months, technically, if you have four per account that you're servicing, then it'll last you a year, assuming it's not taking a beating. So again, this is more like a residential use. They're taking into consideration because when you're in schools and office buildings, we know they go bad and they go bad fast. You rewash them, you maintain them. But at some point, you know, when, when this thing becomes this and it's useless and you're dragging it and you can hear that mop, mop stick actually hitting the tile and making this noise like tang, 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 that, that that's when you get rid of it <laughs> so but for residentials uh, parents they can keep it a little longer every two to um, three months and then washing is you wash it or after every use which is obvious right if you don't wash it then mold mildew starts growing and if it's enclosed in a damp black dark environment then it's going to start smelling bad and fungus is going to grow it's nasty you don't want that so um, wash it and then a washing machine. So apparently you can do a washing machine or add a dish detergent to a bucket of water and lather it up, then rinse it. So basically you can use it in a washing machine, just throw it. If it is from a commercial account that I don't want to be using it in my household washing machine. So I would rather, we have a dedicated wash it, washer and dryer for the laundry that comes from the accounts that we use because I don't want my newborn baby's clothes, my clothes being washed with the, with, with the same stuff because depending upon the, the facility you're in, we've got different accounts that we clean. So those mop pads get beat up and some of them have stuff that you really don't want to even be touching without a glove. So, or the other alternative is 
put a dish detergent into a bucket of water and then lather it up and then rinse it off and then dry it. Of course, you, you have to dry it because otherwise the previously noted stuff is going to gr start growing on it. And then if you like to go extra mile, they provide, a, this is according to Mop Paul and then per Rubbermaid and Rubbermaid is, a, is an amazing company that provides a lot of product for cleaning industry made of plastic mostly. And um, if you want to go the extra mile, then you soak it in a diluted bleach mixture for about 10 minutes and then rinse it again. So let's keep scrolling down. We've got cleaning racks and the cleaning racks, they are suggesting you to notice major wear and tear whenever you find out. Other than that, there's no like a suggested time frame, like a week, two weeks, month or two. Cleaning microfiber, especially microfiber cleaning racks, we use them for a while. In our house, we rewash them, rewash them, uh, kitchen. So what I also recommend doing it, uh, color code them. So for example, blue ones for mirrors and windows. This eliminates and or reduces the cross contamination back and forth. You could use like a red ones for a bathrooms and then green one for dusting and etc. right? So Amazon is one of the amazing places where you can buy the microfiber cloth in bulk and uh, we'll put a link for the microfiber cloths that we buy. Reach out to your resellers. Sims Club, Costco is also amazing places if you don't have an account, a cleaning company account, but then there's Walmart. Walmart are a little lower end. The Sims Club and Costco have like bigger ones that we actually enjoy using them in house and provide them for our accounts too. But Amazon is mostly where we buy ours and they're color coded so it means that bacteria from like a toilet bowl is not going to end up on your telephone handset when you're going to wipe it clean so cross contamination reduces it that's a good practice in general to do how often to replace the brooms no hard and fast timeline so there's no hard and fast timeline for the broom basically if the bristles get worn out then it's ineffective then you get rid of it but if you want to wash it, you can wash it with warm soapy water about once a month. And that's the recommendation. And another essential tool that we all use, that is a toilet brush and toilet brushes. So they recommend to get rid of them every six months. So half a year, technically two of them. And depends where you buy them, right? If you go and buy them in Ikea, they aren't cheap. If you buy an Amazon, they've got cheap ones, fancy ones. You can go Walmart and Target, etc., And they've got nice ones as well. So about six months and or if you are cleaning them, then you can hold on for a little longer. Um, but the cleaning is recommended once every time you use it. So the methods are provided here. Swish it around it with warm soapy water and rinse it. So technically just put it, you know, warm soapy water, rinse it and then put it to dryer. You know, they normally have a stand in which they dry and luckily, uh, hopefully the one that you're using. Uh, it allows it to dry out and you can also add bleach to cold water and soak your toilet brush for about 10 minutes and then rinse it and dry it so regardless whichever the methods you do drying is essential same goes with mop pads microfiber cloth and toilet brushes and etc otherwise it's just gonna start growing fungus mildew and you really don't want that smell it stinks it stays and if you have not watched the video where I talk about how to get the cleaning leads, please go and watch it, like, share and subscribe. And I can't see, wait to see it on another video where I specifically talk how to obtain cleaning leads for those solopreneur cleaners or those cleaners that are willing to grow up. Or perhaps it's your fear that's holding you back from starting a cleaning company because you don't know how to get the leads. Go watch that video and I'll see you there. Thank you. Bye-bye.